Hey everyone, welcome back to another course on creating consistent character LoRa's. In the last video, we explored how to train a 1.2.2 video model for a consistent character LoRa for 1.2.1 14 billion model. We then applied the trained LoRa to the 1.2.2 workflow with Instagirl and Lenovo LoRa. As I mentioned before, we were also able to use the trained LoRa model with the 1.2.2 low noise model since that model is essentially a lightly trained version of 1.2.1. However, in this video, we'll be improving those results by training the LoRa on both the low noise and high noise model in the 1.2.2 workflow. With the recent release of features for the 1.2.2 model training, for both the high noise and low noise models, it's going to be much easier for us to train the models fully. Also from the previous video, I haven't yet explained in detail the different ways to create datasets for your training images, except to use the flux context face swap. I also cover this today and show you which workflows to use and which run pod template to set up and how to prepare your dataset effectively. I also go over the recommended training settings for the 1.2.2 model for high noise and low noise, along with captioning tips that can make a difference in your results. The resources for building your training dataset, including multiple comfy UI workflows, the RunPod template link, and the step-by-step -step guides are all available on our members only page. Consider joining to access these materials and think of it as part of your journey to becoming an expert in comfy UI AI workflows. By joining, you also gain access to our private channel where members help each other daily and you will receive priority answers from me whenever you run into any issues. When it comes to training the new LoRa, we'll be using the AI Toolkit's new 1.2.2 model training option as we discussed earlier. AI Toolkit by Ostris provides a very user-friendly interface for training a wide range of models. For training our LoRa, we'll be using RunPod since a strong GPU is required to handle training for both the low noise and high noise models. I have seen it is still possible to run the training on a 24GB VRAM on a consumer grade GPU like 3090 or 4090, but I have not personally tried completing the training with this setup. For those who want to try it out locally, you can use my one-click installer for AI Toolkit to download it locally very conveniently. The first part of creating an AI influencer is creating the base portrait of the image. This is essentially a high quality portrait image. We can create this first image using the 1.2.2 Instagirl AI influencer template on RunPod. For this template, I recommend the 4090 GPU or 3090 GPU. There was also a recent release of a new version of the Instagirl LoRa models, so I added this in the RunPod template as well. In the resource folder, I also left a folder called Instagirl Mix Prompt that have all the example sample images of different AI influencers that you can drag and drop to Comfy UI to generate it for yourself. All credits go to Instagram LoRa founders that have left us with these amazing example prompts. To use the new LoRa, simply drag and drop the workflow into the Comfy UI interface once the container loads. Before we dive into the settings of AI Toolkit to run the training job, let's talk about creating the data set and the captions needed for each images. The first workflow we're going to talk about is the Flux Context Face Swapping workflow. We talked about using this workflow for training the 1.2.1 model in the previous video, but I haven't explained in detail how this workflow works. Personally, I think this is a really good workflow for swapping the entire head and not just the face. So for example, if you want the hair or the earrings or any accessories on the head of your influencer to be swapped, this workflow is extremely good at doing that. You essentially load the images of the face that you want to swap to and the original face. Then we use the face analysis models and the face align nodes to detect and align both faces. It makes sure that the new face matches the angle and proportions of the original image. After that, auto crop faces automatically crops out the detected faces. And lastly, we use the image paste crop node to paste the new face onto the correct position of the original image. If we step over to the model section, we use the Flux1 dev context model as we discussed previously, and it is connected to the placer LoRa with the strength value of 1.0. Since we're only using the model for swapping the face and triggering the placer LoRa, we only use the placer keyword as the positive prompt here. Here are two example images that were created on the 1.2.2 Instagirl workflow. 
As an example, the bottom is an AI influencer that I want to train on. And the first image is the style of the image I want to train on. I'm going to try running the workflow and see what we get here. Here is the result that I got for face swapping. The head position is swapped pretty well onto the original image. And even though the original image and the new image have a different color contrast, the color of the new face blends into the original image pretty well. But the only thing here is I think the face is a little too big in terms of the body, so I want to change this. In order to do this, you can change the scale factor of the face and the shift factor to move the position of the head to however you want. The first auto crop faces is for the position of the original image, and the second auto crop face is for the new face. Here is another result after I correctly aligned the face. And on the third try, I think I got the best result. Fiddle with these values to see which one produces the best result. You might also notice the face details is not perfectly preserved, but as long as distinct features of the face is maintained, you'll be able to generate really high quality images with the One 2.2 Instagram LoRa and the Lenovo LoRa. One last tip for the face swapping images is to have a similar color skin tone because as you can see in the result, a new face image that I'm swapping to has a much lighter skin tone. I've left all the model download links in the notes section in the workflow, including the Placeit LoRa model. I've also created a Rompa template to run this workflow in the cloud, and I recommend the 4090 GPU to run this workflow. In my step-by-step -step LoRa training guide, I've left all the Rompa template link and the workflow pair so that you can find these easily. The second way to create your dataset is using the one 2.2 image to video workflow. In the resource folder, there's also a runpa template link and I recommend the 4090 GPU to launch this template. The one 2.2 image to video model definitely excels at keeping the consistent facial features of the original person. Using this workflow, you can change the background of the original image, change the poses and facial expressions and even change the clothes of the original AI influencer. And after downloading the video, you can extract certain frames to use it as part of your data set. For example, here, you can use prompt in a clever way to change the clothes of the influencer. I'm writing, she moves to her left and exits the scene entirely. She re-enters the scene now wearing a light red t-shirt. And here is another example to change the girl's clothes into a white dress. In both these cases, you can see that the facial features are very consistent. If you want a paid alternative, you can also use Kling 2.1 to use the same prompt to generate videos in the same way. Kling 2.1 and 1 2.2 excel at different things, so you might want to experiment different prompts and images. Third way to create different data set is using the Flux Context Dev Pro and Max models. Using these three different models, you can use it to change the facial angles and expressions and also the clothes. The Flux Context Pro and Max models are paid models with 4 cents and 8 cents per generation, respectively but they do create better quality images and results. In order to use the Flux Context Pro and Max models, you need to enable API mode in Comfy UI and then log in and deposit some credits to run the workflow. I've left this workflow in the folder as well. And if you want a detailed guide on the qualities of each model, you can refer to my previous video on Flux Context. If you don't want the paid Pro and Max model, I've left the Flux Context dev workflow for you to use. Personally, I think the dev model is as good as a paid model in terms of creating different angles and shots of your character. Last but not least, Nano Banana is also an excellent image editing model that creates multiple variations of your influencer in different backgrounds, poses, and outfits. Nano Banana is completely free, and there are a lot of different ways to utilize this model effectively. One of our members in our community was able to use Nano Banana in a very creative way. By editing your model and the backgrounds or clothes in the same image, you're able to use a certain prompt to merge those images into one consistent image. All credits go to Pascal, who is our member of our community. Like this, we're constantly sharing knowledge and tips on how to create better images for your AI influencers. Now that we talked about different ways to create your data set, let's now talk about what images you should have for your training images. First, have at least 20 to 30 high quality images that has at least a 768 resolution. Try to aim for different backgrounds, poses, face angles, and different expressions for your AI influencer. 
you should not only have the front face of your influencer, but the faces in multiple angles because you want your LoRa model to understand your AI influencer better. For example, if you only have front face of your influencer or same background and poses, you might end up training your LoRa on those specific features and you might have a hard time changing these elements later on when you generate the images. Try to have some side view of your influencer or even have a slightly tilted angle. I also recommend you to create different expressions of your influencer. This will help the LoRa model produce better results. I have a expression editor comfy UI workflow in the resource folder, so you can use this to easily change the expressions of your influencer. Try not to go too overboard with the expression, but only slightly change it for the purpose of the Instagram post. Here are the sample images I created using the Flux Context, Nano Banana, and the Flux Context face swap workflows. Personally, I prepared about 15 images for the training, but you should have a bit more for the variations. If you have the images, it's time to talk about captioning. But before we talk about creating the captions, since we are training this on AI Toolkit, it is extremely important to understand how Trigger Word works in AI Toolkit. There are two main ways the Trigger Word section in AI Toolkit functions. First is automatic appending. When you put something inside the Trigger Word section, the AI Toolkit automatically appends the trigger word at the end of each caption. So for example, if your caption is a beautiful painting and you have 12.2 as a trigger word, the AI Toolkit will automatically append this to the end and the final caption will be a beautiful painting 12.2. This type of caption, I find it best for style training such as specific art styles or visual looks. Second way is the manual placement with the trigger and captions. This is by using the special annotation square bracket trigger square bracket inside your caption. And this is best for object or character training where the position of the trigger word matters. So for example, if a caption file says a square bracket trigger square bracket standing by the lake and the trigger word is 12.2, final caption will be a 12.2 standing by the lake. But for our training purposes, we will just leave the trigger word section empty and we will put the trigger word in front of all the captions when we are generating this from ChatGPT. I've left a prompt to use ChatGPT to create us all the captions and generate us a zip file. The prompt should give you a pretty good captions for all your images. But if you want to be super detailed on your captions, here are some rules. First, always include your trigger token and start every caption with your character identifier. You want to describe every part of the images that you want to change later when generating the images. So what you describe is what you can control. But for most of the cases, I find the LLM models to do a pretty good job in terms of doing the captions. Once you have the images and captions pair, it's time to move over to AI Toolkit to start training your images. To launch the AI Toolkit, let's go over to RunPod and select the RTX Pro 6000 Workstation Edition. Usually I use this GPU to train both the high noise and low noise models for 1.2.2. Usually it takes about 5 hours for me to train both the models. In the datasets, just drag and drop all the images and the captions. Once you drag and drop the images and caption pair, the AI toolkit will just recognize both of them and then create the correct captions and image pairs for us. Let's go over to the left and click new job. For the trigger word, just leave this as empty if your trigger word is already in the caption that the ChatGPT generated. The 1.2.2 image to video for Team Billion model is available as a training option now. This 1.2.2 model is a little bit different from the 1.2.1 model that we trained on the previous video because the model uses two transformers instead of one. The high noise transformer handles early division steps while the low noise transformer refines details in later steps during the image generation process. Each transformer has 14 billion parameters, so together they represent a pretty big 28 billion parameter workload. This also means that you need to train both of these models either together or separately. That's why I'm recommending RunPod to train both models at the same time, as it will take a lot more time to train individual models separately on a lower VRAM option. However, if running the RunPod template is not your option because of budget, you can run this locally with the low VRAM option. So if you are in any consumer grade GPU like the 4090, 5090, or the 3090, which has a range of 24 to 32 gigabyte VRAM, you want to keep the low VRAM option on. This option will load and unload each model to make sure that single model is loaded in your VRAM so that you don't run into out of memory issue. 
You also want to change the step to every 10 steps only if you are on low VRAM option. For example, if the step value is set to 1, on the first step the high noise model is trained and on the second step the low noise model is trained and so forth. This constant switching will require unloading one transformer from the GPU and loading the other back in and this will add a ton of overhead and makes your training very very slow. But if you are on a VRAM like the RTX 6000 workstation which has a 96 gigabyte of VRAM which has a plenty of space to load both models at the same time, it's good to keep this as one step. The quantization reduces precision to save VRAM. The trainer here uses the float 8 quantization which is a good balance of between efficiency and quality. You generally don't want to drop below 5 to 6 bit quantization unless absolutely necessary and you don't have enough VRAM because it can harm the quality of the LoRa. For the LoRa linear rank, you can lower this to 16 if you are on a lower VRAM or leave this as 32 for higher end GPU. Higher end GPU as in non-consumer grade GPUs. For the time step, linear is pretty good here. For the frames and FPS, you want to keep everything as one as the same as the previous video because we are training on only images. In the end, there are 10 prompt section that you can put. This is the prompt that the model generates as it learns on your images. For this, you can just ask any LLM to create 10 prompts for your trigger word. And then just copy and paste all of the prompts into the input section. Let's now save the job and run the training. I wasn't able to capture the moment when the training finished, but all the checkpoints should be under this checkpoints tab. There should be both low noise and high noise models for you to download, and you can also download the models at different steps. And here are the two models that I downloaded, Rachel low noise model and the Rachel high noise models. After downloading these two models, you want to put them under the comfy UI slash model slash LoRa's folder if you are running this locally. If you want to upload your LoRa models to use it in your RunPod template, for example, to use it with the one 2.2 Instagirl workflow, you open up the template that I prepared, deploy the template with the RTX 4090, which is one of the recommended GPU to run this workflow. When the container starts loading up, you can open up Jupyter Notebook. Sometimes the status says not ready, but it is actually ready. And then navigate to the comfy UI slash model slash LoRa folder in the workspace, and then drag and drop your LoRa models there. Once you do that and you load up Comfy UI, the new LoRa model should be there when you want to select them. Once you open up the one 2.2 Instagirl workflow, create two LoRa loaders node and then attach it to the other LoRas. Load the high noise and the low noise LoRa models that we trained from AI Toolkit and then make sure that the high noise LoRa model is attached to the one 2.2 high noise model and then low noise LoRa model to the 12.2 low noise model. Personally, I set the strength value to 1.0, but you can also test with different strength value to see which results give you the best images. From what I have tested using these two LoRa models compared to the last video, I can see that the prompt adherence and the quality of the image is much better. For example, for my training images, I had Rachel with glasses both on and off, and the 12.2 model was able to give me both consistent faces of Rachel with glasses on and off as well. And it was also able to create different clothes, underwear, and even NSFW contents. Now by using these two LoRa models, you can definitely create a lot of different consistent looking AI influencers. Well, I hope you guys found these resources helpful. Consider joining our membership for gaining access to all the resources and my support. You will get priority answers and resources when I make updates to the workflows and templates. You will also gain access to our private Discord channel to ask any questions. You will also be able to chat with our other members to discuss better workflows and results that each of them created. So you will be able to discuss this together as well. Leave a comment down below on what you want to learn and any questions and I'll try to answer them as much as possible as well. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with more AI content for the next video.